So a really interesting situation happened the other day. Somebody messaged me and said, hey, I'm about to buy a really big tank. I'm about to spend a whole lot of money on lights. I'm about to spend a whole lot of money on CO2 and substrate and all this stuff. But I've never done planted aquariums before. Can you help me? So let's talk about that. What's going on guys? Joseph from H2Oplants.com here today. And we're going to be talking about should you spend a ton of money on really good equipment to achieve so-called results that you're looking for? Or should you go with maybe a more budget friendly option and still achieve some pretty good looking tanks? Well, this scenario came up to me the other day. Somebody reached out and said, hey, I'm about to buy a 75 gallon tank. I'm about to buy uh, the most expensive lights that I know of on the market. I'm about to buy a CO2 canister and I need help picking out the substrate and plants for it. It's my first time setting up a plant to tank. So we gotta kind of put on the brakes here because I don't recommend that for anybody. Well, the tank size is really up to your discretion what you wanna do as far as the size of the aquarium and what you wanna keep in it and your end result. I've already gone over kind of my thoughts on smaller tanks versus larger tanks when it comes to planted aquariums in a video, I'll link it up above. But when it comes to just setting up your personal aquarium and deciding what equipment you're gonna buy, we need to really talk about that. So this guy that reached out, he sent me a picture of my friend Adam's tank, which is kind of all over Facebook and also Instagram. He posts a lot about his uh, his aquarium because it looks beautiful. It's one of the most stunning looking aquariums on kind of all of social media that I've found. And it's just a massive 75 gallon tank. He's got some reds and greens and, and some beautiful plants. But he knows what he's doing because he's been in the hobby for years now. So it doesn't make sense for somebody that's brand new to plants who may have some aquarium knowledge, but when it comes to planted aquariums, I don't advise going the route of buying the most expensive stuff. So you're going to spend, let's say, $200 on a very large tank or maybe slightly more. So if you're talking about a 75 gallon, you're talking about probably around $200, maybe slightly more. Then you're talking about the lighting. Lights in this case were the SB Reef Lights, which I haven't done a video on yet. That's probably coming soon. I still have to buy them to test them and showcase them, but they're really good lights based on what I know. Adam, who designed that tank, it has also used them on that tank and achieved a beautiful result. But they're also really expensive. So you're talking about for a 75 gallon tank, you're probably talking about $450, $500 for the lights. So right there, you're $700 in. Now, he was also talking about CO2. Even if you were to go the cheapest route possible, buying a cheap regulator, a CO2 tank, all the miscellaneous components that come along with it, you're in it for at least another 150, maybe $200. So right there, what are we at? We're at 900 bucks, not including the substrate. The substrate probably on a 75 gallon tank is gonna cost anywhere between 100 and $200. So you're looking at $1,100. And you haven't even bought plants, driftwood, rocks, or fish yet to put in the aquarium. And you're already all this money to eat. And you're not even talking about the filter, the heater, any of the other miscellaneous stuff that you may need. So you're talking about like a $1,500 to almost $2,000 aquarium set up when it's all said and done. And hey, maybe you have the budget for that and that is completely fine. If you don't mind spending $2,000 to set up an aquarium that is gonna be a test experiment because at the end of the day, that is what it is when you're new into aquariums and into planted aquariums. If you don't know what you're doing, it's at the end of the day a test experiment because you're gonna have some failures and you're gonna have some successes. Just because you throw a bunch of money at these equipment items and, and think that you're going to achieve this look is not usually gonna happen and it may in your case, but very rarely you're gonna have some failure. So what I don't want to see happen is somebody that's maybe budget minded and wants to kind of achieve some really good looking aquarium goals and results based on stuff that they've seen online spend all this money thinking that they need to achieve that because it's just simply not the case. So now, those of you that have been in the hobby for a while or really just veteran planted aquarium hobbyists, you know that sometimes there's issues that come up and maybe you can also shed some light in the comments below. And even if you're a newbie into the hobby and only been keeping planted aquariums for a couple months now, let us know your experiences with aquariums so that way people that are coming into this video for the first time trying to figure out planted aquariums can understand that maybe not buying that most expensive light or that CO2 isn't needed right now to achieve results. So I've also done a video already on the proper tank size for planted aquariums or kind of what I think is the best aquarium sizes for planted aquariums. And really I lean more towards the small. If you want to check out that video, you could click up top, but I lean more towards small because it's going to be cheaper to set up overall. And it's going to be an easy kind of playground to play with because like I said, this is a test experiment. You're going to have failures. You're going to kill some plants. I've killed many plants. I still kill plants. I got plants in the other day for one of the tanks downstairs that I've been working on, and it died. 
what what else is new? I spent like $60 getting these plants to try and see if it'll work and it died. So when it comes to setting up these aquariums, if you're just new into the hobby, stay on smaller scale, think kind of smaller minded and, and really test your, your method out before you go big. And now you may say, say to yourself, well, but I really want to get these really good results and and I, I've been told I need this light, or I see these people using this light, or I see these people using CO2, and I want that. I want what they, they have. I want that beautiful aquarium look. And that is completely achievable without it. Now, we're gonna showcase the little cube tank. So let's talk about this little cube tank. I've already done a full video on this cube tank. You can click up top to watch that as well. But this is a small little cube. It's a seven gallon tank. You got a probably $30 filter, and that's being gracious. I think it's somewhere around 20. I want to say this light is about $40, maybe a little bit cheaper. It's an Asta 20 light. That's a Sunson 3, no, uh, 602B, I think it is, filter. So between those, you got about $60, $70. The glass aquarium with shipping, let's just say, is about $100. Bucks. So you're looking at $170. I don't run a heater because I don't have fish in here at the moment. Uh, the stand was custom built. Maybe let's just say $20 for the stand. So all together, you're probably looking at about $150 for this setup here. And some people would argue that this is a really good looking aquarium to them. And hey, it's a matter of preference. What you like is your own decision. I personally do really like the way it looks. I think it came out really well. There are a couple little tweaks that I plan to do in the future just because the background isn't exactly how I want it to be. But as far as the foreground and the midground and everything growing, it looks phenomenal. So on top of the tank and everything costing about $150, what do we have in it? Well, we have several plants in here, which if I had to tally up, maybe around, I would say another hundred bucks or so for the plants. And that's just because it kind of went off the rails with some of the more expensive stuff that I wanted to put in here. But that's not to say that you can't achieve a similar look for a lot less because it's definitely able to be done. I just chose to throw in a couple rare plants that I had laying around to really accent the tank nicely. As far as the wood and the stone, there's probably about five pounds of stone in here and two pieces of driftwood. That'll run you maybe about another 50 bucks. So we're probably about $300 all in on this aquarium, but with that 75 gallon tank that we we're just talking about, you're talking about five times or more money to achieve a very nice looking tank. And that's not to say that you would even be able to achieve it with all that gear just because you have all of it you're still gonna have issues. And yes, this aquarium did have CO2 in it when we first set it up, but I chose to remove it recently just because uh, the plants in here are really just easy to go plants. They don't need CO2, they're fine without it, and I just kinda let them be. Now, on the other edge of the spectrum, let's pan over to this guy. This guy right here. Oh, we gotta switch around. And now this guy, this is the 90L. So. What we're running on here is more top line stuff. We have a twin star light, we have an Eheim filter, and we have CO2, although I recently disconnected it because I wanted to try an experiment and see what would happen. Um, and the, you know, we got a massive amount of stone in here. So overall, between the light, the filter, the tank itself, you're looking at much more. I mean, yeah, it is a bigger tank. As you go bigger, it's gonna cost more money. That's to be expected. Uh, but you're looking at probably almost close to $700 or $800 with everything together in here if I was to include the CO2 system, maybe slightly more. And that's completely fine. You know, there, there's two different types of ideology. You have uh, harder to grow plants, you have a more expensive light to achieve some, some sort of look that you're really going for. And on the other end, you have a much simpler design, uh, much more cost effective and budget friendly. And my thing is, is when you come into the hobby and you're brand new, we have a lot of people that come into the hobby and then leave shortly after. Usually they have failures and having failures I've gone over in past is completely fine like I said earlier I've killed many plants it just happens all of these things it's a test experiment there isn't one tank that you're gonna nail and not have any issues whatsoever whether it's not having algae or not having plants die or not having issues with pests maybe uh, of some sort it's gonna happen it's bound to happen it's just the way this is this is this is science it's a it's a ever evolving environment that is inside of a glass box so but when it comes to kind of setting up your first aquarium go middle of the ground budget don't go super cheap because there are some super cheap options out there which don't have good uh, success rates and definitely read the reviews and ask people before you buy things. Do you need that three, four hundred dollar light or could you get away with that twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollar light? Because you would probably be able to achieve similar results. Now with bigger tanks it's a bit more of an expense like I've gone into in that previous video. 
they're just more costly because you need bigger equipment, which is completely fine if you have the money for it. But if you're new to planted aquariums, I urge you, go small, get your feet wet, figure out how to grow some things, and then get going. Also, I just realized I left out an important part. When you're first setting up a new plant to tank, only grab like one of each kind of plant to see what's gonna grow for you because there's certain plants that won't grow in certain types of water conditions. So for me, I always recommend grab like one of each type of plant, see what grows, and then if those do well, grab more of them at a later date because you're, you're not really sure what's gonna work in your water and you don't wanna spend, you know, $100 on one particular plant, say you want like a dwarf hair grass carpet, like this aquarium, and you buy a ton of it and none of it grows for you and maybe it's your water conditions, maybe you didn't have enough light, maybe you didn't have CO2, whatever the case is, only grab one and see how it goes. If it does grow after, you know, say a month, it's growing, it's good then you can buy more. And chances are most plants can be propagated out so you won't need to buy more if you buy one of each and then there you go. It's much simpler, easier on your budget. And yeah, I just wanted to make sure I added that part in. So that's really it guys. I just wanted to kind of go over that because I want people to understand that you don't need to spend a lot of money to achieve very good results. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this topic. If you're, whether you're new, I've been in a while or a really long time, let us know down in the comments below. As always, if you want to subscribe so you don't miss future Planted Aquarium content, you can click the round button. And if you want to check out our last video that we did on house plants, you could click over there. And if you want to check out the video we did on the top five nano plants for your smaller aquariums, much like this one, you click right over there. And I'll see you guys next time.